You are looking at pictures of the white rhinoceros. It's one of the largest and rarest of land mammals. The preservation of this animal is a major concern of one of these three men. What is your name, please? My name is Ian Player. My name is Ian Player. My name is Ian Player. Only one of these men is the real Ian Player. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Orson Bean, and Kitty Carlisle. On to tell the truth. Brought to you by new improved Ice Blue Secret deodorant. Now with hexachlorophene to help keep you cool, calm, dry. And now, here's your host, Bud Collier. Oh my, it's always a joy to rejoin you. It starts another whole new week and it's a bright one with you always. Hey, Orson, you've taken over the, the, the lead in your show as well as uh, producing it and everything Yes, I, I left Never Too Late and I'm in uh, Home Movies, my off-Broadway musical down that's in that's Greenwich Village. Pro Provincetown Theater, isn't it? And you know, these three folks here are investors in it. How about that, are they? They're protecting our investors. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. Well, continue. Good luck. I want to get out and see that next week, if I may. Good. So we'll come down and see you. Now, open up your envelope, if you will, please, and follow along as I read on this first story. I, Ian Player, am chief warden of all game preserves in Zululand, South Africa. Zululand is the last stronghold of the world's rarest big game animal, the white rhinoceros. My special interest is their preservation and increase. The process involves capturing the animals by means of tranquilizing guns and transporting them to other former native habitats throughout the continent. At the turn of the century, our entire white rhino population numbered only 20. Through sound conservation practices, there are now more than 700 animals. Signed, Ian Player. <laughs> Panel, these three gentlemen all claim to be Ian Player, chief game warden in Zululand, as you heard. Let's start this questioning, if we may, with Orson B. Orson? Oh, all right. Mr. Player number one, how are things in Zululand? Is it hot there and... Uh... Nice place to live, or so-so? Very so. pleasant. Very pleasant indeed. Is it, is it indeed pleasant in Zululand? Number three, uh, <laughs> there are two splendid beasts that are uh, uh, inhabitants of, uh, among other places, Zululand. I believe the kudu and the dick dick. Describe them in your own words, these excellent. Number two? The kudu, yes, and the kudu dick dick. is a large antelope. The dick dick is a small antelope. Oh, all right. Number three, uh, which beastie was originally known as the wild man of Borneo? Uh. Number one, do you know? Number no, I two. don't know. Orangutan. And uh, what can you tell me about the orangutan as far as uh, preservation goes? Oh, well, it's faced as difficult a struggle as the white rhino in South Africa. Number one, uh, how are you? Kitty Carlisle. <laughs> uh, number three, where do the Bantu live? The Bantu? Uh, throughout Africa. Uh, number two, where do you live in Zululand? I live near Ishoi the capital of Zululand. Thank you. Number one, uh, how long does a lion take to eat his kill? Well, it depends on the lion. <laughs> an average lion. Well, a hungry one would do it rather rapidly. Number two, how long does a lion, do you say, take to eat his kill? I'd say it takes him about a half an hour to gorge himself and leave satisfied. Thank you. Number three, can an antelope outrun a lion? Yes. Number one, is a rhinoceros the most dangerous animal in the world? No. Which is? Man. <laughs> oh, there's an answer. Wow, there's a whole sermon in that answer. Tom Poston. Well, I'm a little scared of those three guys over there because they're all men. <laughs> I'll, I'll ask number three if, uh, you know, there was just recently a film made called Zulu. And in that film, there are scenes of the natives 
bearing arms and in war scenes and battle scenes. I, is that against the law in Zululand? No. Uh, number two, do you agree with that answer? Yes. Uh, it is not against the law for Zulu natives to bear arms? To carry arms, you mean? No, they certainly carry arms in Zululand. Uh, they do. I didn't think that they did, but there you go, I see. No. Peggy Cat. Number one, is Zululand part of the Union of South Africa? That is correct. Thank you. Number three, what does this name mean to you, Mafa King? Mafa King is a small town on the edge of Bechuana land where it was relieved in 18, 1900. Thank you. Uh, number um, two, what is a hardy beast? A hardy beast is again a form of antelope. Thank you. N uh, number one, when the Zulus fought their last battle, what was the name of that battle? It was the Battle of Matuba. Thank you. Number three, how many colors of rhinos are there? They were all the same color. Oh, then number two, why is it called the white rhino? I thought it was an albino rhino. Well, no, like a lot of... <laughs> like a lot of big animals in Africa, they take sand baths to keep off the flies and insects. And, oh, uh, number one, the ones in our... That's all the time we have. I'm sorry to say it is time for you now to mark your ballots. So please mark them at once. Without change and without consultation, of course. Selecting as you go, number one, number two, or number three. Yeah. Our team of challengers will receive the usual $250 for every incorrect vote. All ballots marked, panel? Very well, Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number one because... Uh... Uh, he, I, I don't know, I think uh, he knew, it. they all knew uh, everything, so I voted for number one. Oh. <laughs> Peggy Cat. Well, I voted for number three, although Ian Player sounds like an English name and he sounds as though he's Dutch. Uh, he's, the Battle of Mafia King is true and uh, I don't know, he looks like it to me. Orson Bean. Well, they're all splendid, but number two knew about the kudu and the dick dick. <laughs> and also, uh, very big in the news these days is the fact that the, the wild man of Borneo, which the orang Utang was originally called because he looked like any one of us, friends, uh, <laughs> is facing extinction. And it seems to me that a game warden would know that. And Kitty. Well, I voted for number one. First place because he said that man was the most dangerous animal, and I couldn't agree more. But, and also, when he didn't say one thing, I thought a lion ate what he could and then left it for three or four days with other lions to kind of watch over the kill. But and I then still came back it. to it? Yeah. Oh, gee. But I still yeah. voted for number one. <laughs> All the right. lions like that. I'll never invite one to dinner. I'll <laughs> All right. It's a widely split vote to start things off tonight with two for number one, one for number three, one for number two. Let's go for it now and find out which one of these three gentlemen is the real chief game warden in Zululand. Will the real Ian Player please stand up? Thank you, sir, very much. Peggy, you were the smart one. I'm very intrigued by this. There is no true white rhino. Is it just a matter of uh, the fact that they roll in dirt and so forth? One of the reasons. Uh, but their skin, actually, their hide is no lighter than the regular rhino. All rhino, the same color. Isn't that amazing? I wouldn't have known that. Thank you very much. Number one, what is your real name, sir, and what did you really do? My name is Michael Jefferson. I'm a BAC pilot. Uh -huh. Aha. <laughs> you fly over that land a good deal. <laughs> and number two, what is your real name, sir, and what do you do? My name is Ethel Fugard, and I'm the author of a play called The Blood Knot, which is currently oh. running the cricket theater. <laughs> and incidentally, some of you golf fans may be interested to know that Ian Player has a younger brother named Gary, Gary Player. Player. Yeah. <laughs> well, gentlemen, in checking the score, you brought us a lot of fun. I must say, you did a good job of fooling the panel, believe me, because they're not that easy to fool. There were one, two, three incorrect votes. And that, of course, with $250 each makes a total of $750. You take a long to divide. And that, of course, comes your way from Dristan, as does a gift package of all the fine products from the makers of Dristan. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Hope you enjoyed your visit to us. Good night. God bless you. We'll be back in a moment with another team of challengers after this message of interest. Those uh, amazing shots of the white rhino that you saw at the beginning of the show were from uh, 
Ivan Tor's motion picture, Rhino, they were taken from that. And as a matter of fact, Mr. Player acted as technical advisor to that picture. Very well, let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Gail Urbeck. My name is Gail Urbeck. My name is Gail Urbeck. Panel, will you please follow along with your copies of this one? I, Gail Urbeck, practice dentistry as a profession and outdoor cooking as a hobby. Recently, I made my hobby pay off by winning the fifth annual American Cookout Championship. Each of the final entries were judged on taste, eye appeal, and availability of ingredients. With my dish called Luau Pork Ambrosia, I won the title of American Cookout Champion and a cash prize of $10,000. Signed, Gail Urbeck. Very well, panel. These three persons all claim to be Dr. Gail Urbeck, American Cookout Champion. Let's start this cross-examination with Peggy Cass. Peggy? Uh, thank you. Uh, number two, when he had the Cookout Championship, what was the weather like? It was uh, warm uh, with a little bit of rain. Oh, that was nice for the fire. <laughs> <laughs> number three, what is a safari stove? Safari stove is a, like a hibachi, hibachi stove, small iron uh, grill. Thank you. And what kind of uh, uh, fuel do you use, number one, in a safari stove? I don't know. Do you know number two? The uh, fuel that I used was a uh, briquette. No, in a safari stove. In a safari stove, what kind? In a safari stove, uh, charcoal. And number three, do you agree with that? No. Uh, number, t number two, do you be how long should the charcoal be uh, lit before you put the steak on? Mm -hmm. uh, for about 20 minutes. 20 to 30 minutes. Thank you. Number uh, three, what the or, fuel... Oh, thank you. <laughs> you don't want billing, just tell me. <laughs> I'm so nervous. I got ahead and find out all this good stuff. Number three, uh, what kind of fuel do you would one use in a safari stove? Oh, just wood, uh, a cheap coal, like stuff. All right. Number uh, one, uh, w describe how charcoal should look before one puts one's fine steak on it in preparation to eating it. Uh, well, it gets a gray. Grayish. Grayish. Film. Number uh, two, uh, describe the luau pork ambrosia in your own words. <laughs> well, it was a loin of pork with the back removed. Uh, the uh, chops were, were slit. Uh, the main part of it was the fact that it was marinated. Uh... Did he? Um, number three, what, can you break down the word orthodontistry? What does it mean, actually? Orthodontistry yeah. is to... The braces in the teeth, what? the straightening of, straightening. Straightening of the also teeth. Straighten. I yes. see. Uh, number one, who gave this enormous amount of money? Kaiser or aluminum. Uh, number two. <laughs> <laughs> when you... And money well spent, I'd say. <laughs> it was a gratitude How many plug. entrants were there, number two? I'm sorry? How many entrants? Uh, the finals. The finals. Final, the final. In the final. 25. 25. And this, this was what, the... Number three, what, what is Luau? Oh. Uh, Tom Poston. Uh, number one, do you know A.B. Weinstein? No. <laughs> number two, do you know A.B. Weinstein? No. Number three, do you happen to know A.B. Weinstein? No. Well, he's one of the best-known dentists in the world, that's all. <laughs> uh, sure he is. Uh, number three, were men and women uh, in this, involved in this particular contest? No. Just, uh... Just men. <laughs> Number two, what are you doing in there, honey? This was the first year that women were permitted to enter, and there were, uh, the finalists were 20 men and five women. And you... Uh, and that's all the time we have. So take your little cooking stoves and mark your ballots, if you will. Mark them at once, without change, and, of course, no consultation permitted as you vote now for number one, number two, or number three. All ballots marked? Uh, well, Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number one. If you'll examine him closely, he looks more like Gail Urbeck than the other two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Peggy oh, Cass, oh. which is your choice? I voted for one. Oh, really? Because number two and three said safari stoves took coal and wood. They take newspaper. Yes. That's the fuel for them. And also, oh, uh, no. yes, yes, it is so. But maybe they don't know what safari stoves are. Also, gee, number two, my charcoal takes like about... 45 minutes to even get gray. 
I can give you a hint on that. Okay. Orson Bean. Well, gee, number one, you, you don't look like uh, Gail Urbach, but you may be. Uh, Tom Poison doesn't look much like Tom Poison to me. I <laughs> <laughs> you knew him for years. And uh, none of them knew I'd be Weinstein, including me. And, uh, uh, but he did a marvelous job on Tom's teeth, I suppose. <laughs> I voted for number two. Yeah. Kitty Carlisle. Well, I voted for number three because he knew about orthodontistry and he did not say, darling, that the safari stove took charcoal. He just said he didn't agree with number two. Later he Later said, he said, said it. Oh, he did? Oh, well. <laughs> and I didn't know it took it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I blew the whole And again, we have a widely split vote, as widely split as before. Two for number one, one for number two, one for number three. Let's find out now which of these persons actually is the American cookout champion. Will the real Dr. Gail Urbick please Stand up. Thank you, sir, very much. Which do you prefer? Do you prefer dentistry or, or cooking? Well, uh, dentistry, I believe. One uh, leads to the other, yeah. more or less. <laughs> anyway. Number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? I am Ray Hoffman and I work for the Spanish Sherry Institute. Thank you. And number three, what is your real name and what do you do, sir? My name is John Dillon and I'm a major in the United States Air Force. <laughs> well, lady and gentlemen, in checking the score, we find that there were one, two incorrect votes at $250 each, and that is for a total of $500 from Dristan. And of course, on your way out, you'll receive a gift package of all the fine products from the makers of Dristan. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed and had as much pleasure in your visit to us as we enjoyed having you here. Good night, and God bless you. <laughs> our third team of challengers. <laughs> what is your name, please? My name is Pepita Riera. My name is Pepita Riera. My name is Pepita Riera. Please follow along, if you will, with your copies of this story, panel. I, Pepita Riera, in 1958, joined Fidel Castro as a guerrilla in the mountains of Cuba. After Castro came to power, I soon realized how he had deceived the Cuban people. I founded an underground anti-Castro organization. Finally, faced with arrest, I was forced to flee to the United States. While here, I have continued my attacks against Castro by radio broadcasts during which I give the names and descriptions of members of the G2, the hated and much feared Cuban Secret Service. My programs are broadcast both from Miami and from Radio Americas in Honduras. They are also broadcast by two secret transmitters right on the island of Cuba itself. Signed, Pepita Riera. <laughs> These three ladies all claim to be Pepito Riera, anti-Castro broadcaster. Let's start with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you, bud. Um, whichever one you are, um, you ought to be congratulated. It must be rather dangerous, even here, to do this work. Are you, number two, do you get threats? Do you get threats about your safety in America? Number two? What do you mean with that? Uh, here in the United States, do, do people write you threatening letters or anything like that? People who are, who are Castro sympathizers, they threaten your safety or your life? Yes. Uh, number three, how long were you in the hills with Castro? Two years. Number one, how do you get the names of the G2 at this point? By the groups of the uh, clandestine in Cuba. Thank you. Tom Poston. Thank you, bud. At number three, recently a port in Cuba was, uh, 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 I don't know what it was, it was shelled or, or torpedoed or, or bombed in some way. What was the name of that town? It was attacked from the sea by anti-Castro forces. What was the Riviera. name? Riviera. That sounds like one of the guys that's with Castro. <laughs> <laughs> number, th number two, do you know the Bodeguita del Media? What do you, you mean? Know, do you know where that is? What do you mean? Bodeguita del Media? Yes. Where is that? It's a restaurant, bar restaurant. Where? 
in Empedrado Street, between Cuba Street and San Ignacio Street. My goodness, you're really... Well, Peggy Cat. Uh, number one, how did you escape from Cuba? By the um, Brazilian embassy, I asked for political asylum. And number three, uh, after you left Cuba, did you, where did you go? Miami. Uh, Miami. Uh, number two, if you broadcast from Miami, do they take the tapes of the broadcast to Honduras and rebroadcast them? Yes, ma'am. Uh, number three, how do you get the tapes of your broadcast to Cuba? You know, it says you broadcast on secret transmitters in Cuba. How do they get what you say? Short wave. Short wave, I see. Orson Bean. Yes, number one, uh, just very, very, very recently, uh, a, a well-known uh, anti-Castro leader was arrested by England. Do you know who that is? Manolo Rai. Who? I heard, I heard today that. Manolo. Number uh, two, uh, who, who is Lisa Howard? Who? Lisa Howard. Do you know? Number three, do you know? Nope. That's all the time we have. So whatever time you have left, use it to mark your ballots, if you will, please, panel. Mark them at once, without change, and with forthright abruptness. As you vote now, without consultation, for number one, number two, or number three. All ballots are marked. So, Tom, for whom did you vote this time? I voted for number three. She's the girl I'd most like to be. In the, in, the, in the mountains of Cuba. Two <laughs> years. Uh, Peggy. Oh, I voted for years. number one. Because, what, I don't know, she had the ring of truth when she said she went to the Brazilian embassy for asylum. Hmm? Orson. Yes, it was. Uh, I voted for number one. Ma Manuel Ray, I think it is, was uh, arrested by England. I don't think they meant to arrest him, but he was on a boat, and they took the whole boat, and he was on it. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. Well, I voted for number two to split things up. I'm, su I'm sure it's number two. Well, you've certainly played this high, wide, and handsome tonight, Pan. I don't recall ever a time when you've been as completely widely split as you've been on each round tonight. Here again, we have two for number one, one for number two, and one for number three. Let's find out now which one of these ladies is the anti-Castro broadcaster. Will the real Pepita Riera please stand up? Much. Peggy got them all right tonight. She's really knocking them right off it's a one miracle. after another. <laughs> Number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? Juana Rosa Fernandez, ticket office supervisor of Viasa, Venezuelan International Airways. Thank you. And Number three, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Eva Yassi. I'm a concert pianist and teacher. <laughs> We thank you, ladies, and Pepita, our congratulations to you. Keep up the good work. Much success and much safety to you. Thank you. Uh, checking the score, of course, we find what you probably already know. There were two incorrect votes, and that means, of course, twice $250 or $500 that you take along with you from us, or rather from Dristan, and on your way out, you'll receive a gift package of all the fine products from the makers of Dristan. Thank you for joining us. Good night, and God bless you. we have time for for tonight, but it was fun, and I thank you for that. Uh, panel, uh, take care of yourselves, because I love you. And don't forget to join us the same time next week. I'll, of course, be with you tomorrow afternoon on the daytime show. And right now, may I say good night for Dristan, and may I remind you once again, most emphatically, to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. program was pre-recorded. The truth has been brought to you tonight by Dristan the Congestion Tablet. For relief of cold, misery, sinus congestion, Dristan. This is Johnny Olsen speaking. For